This is part two in a series on how to experience the person and the presence of God. How to grow in the intimate knowledge of Jesus and the Father. And again, I want to quote 2 Peter 3.18, where you and I are instructed to grow in the grace that is the presence of God and that is the power of God and how to grow in the knowledge of of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's more than information. It's about my personal knowledge of Jesus, my direct experience, and by my personal knowledge of the Father, uh, by direct experience. And so in the last uh, teaching, we talked about how Moses in Exodus 3 had a God encounter. And your spiritual life really begins with a God manifestation, a God encounter. That's where it begins, where you experience uh, the Holy Spirit, you experience the Lord Jesus, you experience God the Father. And so now we want to look at the scripture because we just talked about how um, Moses saw the bush on fire. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, the Father will set your personal bush on fire so that you can come into a deeper, intimate knowledge of the Father in Jesus. And so the scripture says here, that when the bush was on fire, Moses began to speak to himself in Exodus 3. Verse 3, and Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. And so I began to grow by spiritual curiosity. I began to investigate. I began to probe. It's very interesting that uh, John, the forerunner of Jesus, in the gospel of John, when Jesus came, he said to his disciples, Behold the Lamb of God. And in the Greek, it means to investigate. It means to probe. It means to examine. It means to, to, to really look at, to stare, to, uh, to fix your gaze upon. And so the way that I grow in experiencing the presence of God is I must fix my gaze on Jesus. I must probe Jesus. I must investigate Jesus. I must become curious about Jesus and the Father when God is speaking to my heart. And look what happens here. When the Lord saw that Moses had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush. And so what happens is this. I begin to grow in experiencing the presence of God when the Father and Jesus get my attention. It all begins with curiosity and the Father and Jesus getting my attention. Because when the Father and Jesus get my attention, the word of the Lord begins to come to me. And God called to Moses is what the scripture says. So holy curiosity will bring you into a holy encounter with the Holy God. Here's how we know this is true. God calls out to him and says, Moses, Moses, and he says, I'm available to you. And so in order for me to have a holy encounter with God and to continue to have a holy encounter with God, I must make myself available. I must stop what I'm doing to hear the word of the Lord, to look up to God, I must turn my attention to God Almighty. And, and, and the Lord speaks and says, Do not come any closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. So holy curiosity begins the process of me finding out who Jesus and the Father is. He is holy. Look at this right now. Moses is beginning to get a revelation of who God is. And this is amazing. He says, remove the sandals from your feet. Listen to me carefully. Are you in need of a breakthrough in your private personal life? Are you in need of a breakthrough in your marriage? Are you in need of a breakthrough for your child? Are you in need of a breakthrough in your finances, your church, or your ministry? Here's what happens when you develop spiritual curiosity and you begin to give God your attention by the word of the Lord. 
you begin to step into a supernatural breakthrough. Listen to me. The first thing that Moses does after God speaks and God says, remove the sandals from your feet. He's saying, I want you to move from a earth walk into a heavenly walk. And it begins with a God encounter. It begins with spiritual curiosity. It begins with me giving the Father and Jesus my undivided, complete, and total attention. You get a breakthrough when you make the decision to change your walk. And so he gets a breakthrough from an earth walk into a heavenly walk, a walk with God, a walk with the Father, a walk with Jesus. Look what it says now. His God says, I am the God of your father. I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Listen, do not be afraid. God wants to make himself known to you. And you are the one that God is looking for. You're the one that God is seeking out. Allow me to say this to you, if I may. Sometimes when your sleep is disturbed, it is not insomnia. It, well, sometimes your sleep is disturbed because the Lord is seeking you, because he wants to give you an encounter with himself so that you can experience his presence. And so sometimes when your sleep is disturbed, it could be a call of the Spirit to rise up and get in the Word of the Lord. It could be a call of the Spirit to read the Scriptures, search the Scriptures, or study the Scriptures. It could be a call to prayer. It could be a call to praise. It could be a call to worship the Father. And it can cause you to get a breakthrough in the middle of the night. The Lord can meet you there. And so sometimes you have to respond to the revelation of the word in order to get your breakthrough and to experience the presence and the person of God. The Lord wants to give you a breakthrough in your private life. The Lord wants to give you a breakthrough in your marriage. Or maybe you're single and you're looking for a mate. If you give God your attention, the Lord can work in a wonderful way and cause you and your mate to meet. Or the Lord can give you a breakthrough for your child or in your finances, in your business. Maybe the Lord can give you some new ideas, some creativity and some innovation. You can get a breakthrough from the natural into the supernatural by a God encounter. And it all begins with a God manifestation, a theophany, some way in which God is trying to get your attention and stir your curiosity to turn to him. And then all of a sudden the word of the Lord comes to you and you're beginning to get a breakthrough. Let's look at this further because in Proverbs 4 and 20, this is what the word of the Lord says. My son, give attention to my words. You know, Jesus spoke to his disciples and these are the kinds of things that he said. He said this, he that has an ear, let him hear. And so whenever the word of the Lord is coming to me, I must give God my complete, total, and undivided attention. Then Jesus said this. He said, take heed how you hear. In other words, I must not allow anything to get in the way of my ability to see and to hear and to know what the Lord is speaking to me. I can't let the word of the Lord come in one ear and go out the other. Oh no, Jesus said, let my sayings sink deep down into your ears. In other words, when I hear the word of the Lord, I must give God my complete, undivided attention. I must listen to remember and listen to recall. And then Jesus said this, let me tell you the one who is blessed, the one who hears the word of the Lord and does it. And so I must put application to the revelation of the word to experience the person and the presence of God. When I receive the word of the Lord and I respond to the word of the Lord and I put application to the revelation of the word of God, 
I experience the presence of the Lord and I experience the person of Jesus and I grow in the intimate knowledge of the Father. This concludes part two of this message on how to grow in the grace and knowledge of our God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the intimate knowledge of the Father. If you would like more information about Tony Kemp Ministries, visit our website, www.tonykemp.com. And thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel.